Are you serious? Hello, welcome to How to Kill an Hour. My name's Marcus Bronzy. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. Before we kick off today's show, I want to show you some love back because uh, we've been getting some great support on social media this week, including the Twitter crew. Hello to Dami, Liz Jarvis, who really liked our Ford video. Uh, we've actually been making some great video content to go alongside our podcast. Very different to the podcast as well. We don't, we're not just filming the podcast and putting it out there. We've got some very interesting ways that we're killing time, including taking Ford cars and driving them in some extreme situations some of them icy some of them San Juni is what I'm going to say but uh, yeah you can check more of those at howtokillanhour.com hello to Wayne as well also loving our videos Marcel Angie Lamar who is Travis J's mum who was a guest on last week's show and on last week's show Travis spoke about one of the most emotional parts of his career being sharing a stage with Dave Chappelle on an impromptu gig Now, he's managed to level up and open for Dave Chappelle. So it's it's really worth having a listen to last week's episode to hear him describing his experience of meeting Dave Chappelle and how it kind of propelled him into the environment that he's in now. So that's last week's show. Make sure you check that out. What episode number is is that, Billy? Is last week's show? 327. 327. Check that out. Uh, Also, be getting love on the podcast app. And I'd really appreciate it if you could press like and subscribe and drop us a review on the Apple Podcast app because it helps us to get to more ears. Shout out to Sophie Chang, who said she loves the podcast and chats as well as the tech side of things. Marcus and Funk are the best. Keep up the great work, guys. Uh, Thank you very much. Appreciate that, man. So, yeah, press subscribe and give us a review. Let us know what you think of the podcast. We'd really appreciate that. Now, before we kick off today's show, we are joined by a comedian, a prank star, uh, somebody who really likes to make an impact with the content they create, Simon Brodkin. We're going to be talking to him in just a moment. But first things first, let's talk about how we've been killing a bit of time. Billy and I have been up to some things between this episode and the one that dropped last week. And uh, let's get through them. First things first, Bill, we have been on electric bikes, on the Volt bikes. Uh, they dropped us them, uh, them like a couple of weeks, just before we did the Ford video, actually, which is why we couldn't speak, to, speak about them until now. Uh, so electric bikes. Now, we've seen a lot of electric vehicles out there, right? And it's fair to say on the forefront of this electric vehicle hype shall we say there's some quirky devices there's like electric skateboards and scooters in it bill yes but people that have been making electric vehicles for a lot longer are people like vault who've been making electric bikes for 10 years now so when they dropped us off a couple of vault bikes they came with to us with the chat saying these are the best electric bikes out there and I was like, all right, everyone says that. But we actually managed to check out a couple of bikes. So I'd like to share my experience with the Vault. And you got, you had a slightly different model, didn't you, Bill? Yeah. Um, now, because they've been making these for 10 years, I'll, uh, they've got some very specific tech. I'll, I'll just get through them and let you know what they do, how they're different to different electric bikes. So they've got a spin tech drive system, right? Which basically, to put it basically, is it kicks in when you need a boost. But if you're going fast enough on your bike turns off so if you're going downhill there's no need for an electric motor if you're going uphill there is need for an electric motor so it conserves energy right Uh, and each of the bikes comes with a 250 watt spin tech motor which means there's no resistance as you switch between these these non-assisted and assisted riding modes so i don't put it if i'm slowly going up an incline the motor slowly kicks in so it feels like i'm just pedaling the same um i will say with these volt bikes though you do have to pedal. You can't just not pedal and just press go on them. It's not a motorbike. Yeah, it's not a motorbike. It's not like... Uh, they've got an LCD heads-up display which lets you know where how fast the bike is going, how the battery is doing, what speed mode you're in. Also, uh, you can hold a button on them and turn on some lights, which are good if you're in the UK and you're riding in the winter. Uh, probably not so necessary in the summer, but there's a lot of night riders out there. Um, and it's got 96 volts of Panasonic power. Something I don't know. It's like I, I think you can like do 100 iPhone battery charges on it or something like that. It's ridiculous. Um, if it was an iPhone charger, um, but yeah, it's really intelligent. It distributes speed as you need it, and it stops distributing it if you don't need it. Sounds cool. But what was our experience, Billy? You had the Metro. What was the difference between the Metro and the one that I had? Like uh, my one was like a folding type one. Yeah, it looked uh, Brompton-y. Brompton type bike, and your one was more of like a mountain bike type one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was quick. Um, it was pretty easy to go to like twenty 
25 miles an hour. But so I advise wearing a helmet when doing this. Always um, safety first. It didn't feel like 25 miles an hour, but if I hit a wall or I hit a brick and then I fell over, I would feel to, I would feel it, to be honest. <laughs> like a normal bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, on a normal bike, you, I don't think you'd be able to get up to 25 miles an hour. 10, 15 miles an hour, maybe. With legs like yours, Billy. Surely you could power up to a good 35 miles an hour on those. 35 miles an hour. <laughs> taking peds over. But yeah, yeah. It, was, it was good. I mean... Yeah. The brakes were the brakes were solid. I didn't I didn't feel as if I was if I was in a touch brake. I didn't feel as if it could like, suddenly stop me. It stopped yeah. me in a safe in a safe manner. It wasn't they wasn't too powerful, but they weren't too soft either. Yeah, I mean, so the bike the ride for it was pretty cool. It's a good bike, yeah. But because yours was like a Brompton style, the easiest way to describe what a Brompton is, in case you're not aware, is like a foldable bike. So with a Brompton, it's all about it being super light. People take bits off their Bromptons, exchange them for like aluminium carbon fiber parts. All in aid of making their Brompton something that they can carry. Now, your Volt Metro, even though it was Brompton in foldability, and, and folding it was quite easy, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. How was it? Was it something that you could carry along, or how could you transport around? Could you wheel it around? I mean, it was still a bit hefty for what it was, to be yeah. honest. But um, to transport it was easy. You could just fold it up, and there's like a little bit of a lassie you, could, you can connect around it's a bit hard to describe without actually seeing it but you can fold it up and then connect a bit of elastic somewhere and then drag it rather than carrying it i mean if you have to go down some stairs in a uh, in like a uh train station you'd be able to do that okay carrying it any further than that you'd, you'd want to put it down okay. it is is heavy because you've got the you've got the big motor on it and the big um battery so you wouldn't recommend like carrying it but you can wheel it it's kind of like a wheelbarrow kind of thing but you're pulling it yeah, and the or wheel, so the wheel, it, yeah. or push it, so the so the wheel can bear the weight, and you kind of just have to steer it around, kind of yeah. like a trolley, like a like a unicycle. Is it like that? Like you're pushing a unicycle kind of, yeah, around, yeah, yeah, one wheel. All right, cool. So not the be- not the best to carry, but if you can wheel it around, I guess you don't really have to lift it. But it's mm. not the sort of thing you can pick up and put on an overhead rack. It's not recommended. No, no, like I would that. not do that. No, that is it would be heavy. All right, wicked. Well, it's got some specs actually. It's got eight gear settings, sixteen inch aluminium frame, weighs eighteen kilograms. That's actually not bad though. Eighteen kilograms. For an electric bike, yeah, yeah it, it's 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 good, but yeah. as I say. Yeah. Okay, and you can get a, a larger battery size as well if you want to go a bit further on it. Did you find that it helped or hindered your experience travelling though? It was it was a lot quicker to get to get around places, I will admit that, yeah. So you'd say it's it's suitable because I feel like they've designed this foldable one so that you can ride to the tube station, take it on the tube or the train, and then ride to where you need to get to another side. Mm. Did it achieve that? Was it less stress? Definitely, yeah. Right. But I'd I'd rather just want to cycle to the destination. To be honest, Do I just go all the way on your bike. Yeah, why not? Fair enough. I mean, that's I had the Pulse, which was like the mountain bike version. So I think it had uh, forty miles of power, and it's got a large battery, which can give you sixty miles an hour if you want to upgrade to that. Uh, I don't know which one I had. Um, but because I didn't really think I needed to, to use it that much. But I'd, I'd, I'll tell you what, I didn't think I was going to use it as much as I did. Mm. But I realised that we could get, I could get into central London slightly quicker than I could if I was to take the train. No joke. It's only like a couple of minutes. But at that up over a week? Y- yeah. Two, what, the two minutes times 52. Well, let's say, I did, yeah, 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 that's an hour and a good hour and 45, 47 minutes. It's not mm. bad for a year, but um, I found it easy to just kind of like know that if I know I can get somewhere and this was that rushing by just cycling there in 20 minutes during the summer, that's going to be my choice, bruv, because getting on a sweaty tube is not the one. Plus, I kind of clocked like I like cycling and I like the fitness aspect of it. And I understand that this doesn't this takes the fitness aspect of it out, but I'd much rather just cruise into work feeling fresh and not sweating like a pig on a summer's day and then if i needed to cycle a bit on the way home i don't know turn it into a lower power mode and give myself a bit of a challenge to cycle it around you know what i mean yeah but like i realized how nice it was to just zing along the bit of the canal or ride along like you know a few roads and stuff and just get into the get into west london and just be fresh bro and because you because i cycle i'm not the biggest cycler right so cycling i didn't realize that like there's loads of little bays you can lock up your bike as well. So mm. it's, it's like, there's just like next to a cafe, lock it up here and then. It comes with a lock as well. That's it's we didn't mention in, that. Yeah. Get a lock that's built in with it that locks the wheel. Uh, it comes, it's, it's like a really high well, grade yeah. chain as well. They, I, I don't know how the leveling system works, but it was like a high grade, like top, like you can insure your bike and this would be the kind of lock that you need to yeah. ensure that you have a premium thick. insurance. Yeah, thick chain. With three C's. 
and uh, Vic with three C's. I don't know what kind of websites Millie's on out here. Oh. You know what I mean? But um, and also it looked like a bike, bruv. And by the way, guys, I just want to say to clarify, we've not been paid for this. This was just an editorial review. Um, it looked like a bike as well. So when I parked it outside a cap with like loads of bikes, it didn't look like, Our hey, face. I'm an electric bike that's worth two grand. Come and nick me, which is the price point of these, right? Um, well, it can be up to... Actually, let me get the updated price point. Let's go and have a little looky now because... Because that's quite worthwhile, isn't it? Because I, I can't remember what your one costs. Uh, do you know the prices, Bill? Off the top? Not off Here the top of the dome. Not off the dome. Do, 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 do. So, the full range. So, Billy was on a Metro 2019, and I was on a Pulse. I believe I was on a Pulse X, which, if you like, UK Gram was a sick tune. So, it starts off at 1400 quid, and mine starts off at, at two grand. So, I know some people would be like, that's pricey, but if it means that you do not have to travel for a year, by a train you can make money back very very quickly do you know what I mean definitely definitely especially when you get a 40 mile charge in it as well so those are the Volt bikes in summary Bill I mean is it was, was it worth an hour definitely yeah <laughs> was it worth an hour I feel like it was well worth it it saves a bit of time if I was somebody who commuted a lot I'd seriously consider cycling in every day knowing that I couldn't knowing that I wouldn't be sweaty because I don't know about you but like London transport or, or public transport is only getting busier right now. And during these hot summer months, if you're on the wrong line during rush hour, like central line during rush hour, that's like hell, bro. It's just people faint. People pass out on the tube. You know? Yeah. It's mad. So I'd rather just cruise somewhere uh, in the sun, not having to cycle. Plus it was sick taking over cyclists because it's got this little like, um, it's like a, it's a, it's a little lever you can press to take off. Did you have that on yours as well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and yeah. then as well as taking off, it gives you a little kick when you're cycling as well. So I, I saw some like professional cyclers in all their, in all their um, gear, all their lycra and stuff. And I was like, just cruising past them, like, <laughs> and they were like heads down looking at me like, how's this guy cutting mad speed? Um, anyway, so those are the Volt bikes. Uh, you can check those in the link to the show description, the, the link in the description for the show. Uh, and we're also going to have links for all the other stuff we're talking about. Now, I love John Wick 3. So I don't want to go on about this too much, Billy, but the guys from Lionsgate UK sent me on a John Wick driving experience. Paul Swift is a sick driver. He does loads of stunt driving uh, and they invited us down to sit in the Mustang Bullet, which is an amazing GT car uh, from, from Ford. It's like a classic design being remastered for 2019. It's also features in the John Wick films. So basically... Paul Swift drove us around doing mad burnouts, sick video, had a sick time. I want to drive the Mustang Bullet is all I'm saying, Bill. I want to drive that car, but I'm going to put it out there in the ether. <laughs> I want to drive that car. Um, so yeah, you can check that bit of content. Um, and also John Wickman. I don't want to have to go on about how much I love it. If you ain't seen it yet, go see it. Nick Bright was speaking to me the other day. He told me he was about to go and see it. I need to find out what his experience with that, with that was. Um, speaking of speed, a geezer, so the Sonic the Hedgehog, we've not spoken about this on the show. So the Sonic the Hedgehog film, uh, we, they dropped the trailer for it recently. And a lot of people were very pissed off because Sonic in the trailer looked remarkably different to the Sonic that many are used to since the original Gee, game dropped. They gave him teeth, which were really human looking. They made his eyes look more realistic. Um, they gave him fur that looked really hair like they kind of un unwittingly have made him look like a horror movie creature he looks like something that could like this summer for lack of a better term they, they fucked, fucked it up. up they fucked him up yeah they <laughs> fucked him up really uh so uh a geezer basically by himself I mean, get, get, let's big up his YouTube because this geezer is a G you're gonna hear a bit of the trailer uh this geezer's uh, he, he's proper man. he's proper he's proper Let's get his let's get his stuff. He's called Arta. He's called Arta Baranov. Yeah. Now this has had like eleven million hits this video. He's basically taken the trailer offline, he's ripped it down, and he's put in a more cartoon looking Sonic. Now, he's a solo artist who's done this and he's managed have you, you've seen the remade trailer, haven't you, Billy? Yeah. They've managed to he's it's not the perfect Sonic, is it? It's not amazing, but by himself looks a hell of a lot better than yeah yeah how can he put he's like managed to, to to scrub the old sonic out and then put his own cgi version in and it looks bloody good so 
this not as a response to this, but you know the, the Sonic film's been delayed now because of the backlash. Yeah, twenty twenty. Well, now there's a, there's a bar that's been set. If they don't meet the bars that yeah. Art has done, and there's some other people online that have done their own one, if they don't do it as good as them, yeah, you might as well just can that movie. It's like, well, they need to hire Arta. Don't you think he should get hired? I'd hire him. Yeah, bro, he's a geezer. He's, sign he's, him up. Sign him up, man. He's he's if he can do that by himself in a couple of weeks since the trailer dropped, they need to hire him. He could do the whole freaking film, bruv. Yeah. Give him a team. Give him a, give him one of those new MacBook, the Mac Pros. Jeez, Bill. Can we just touch on that real quick, though? Behemoths. Behemoth. Um, there was the. Did you watch? You watched the Mac announcement yesterday, didn't you? I didn't watch it, but okay. I, I I read up. I read up on it. Uh, one of the there's there's loads to go on about, but um, I mean, I, I got some. I know that there were some updates to iOS. Yeah, massive screen as well. Yeah, yeah, but it's, um, it's like five grand screen. Or six? No, I think it's four grand. Four grand script screen. Yeah, and then the base level of Mac Pro is five nine nine nine. Yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing that the uh, fully decked out one's going to be around about fifty grand. Ten grand, I'd say. I'd say ten. I don't know, ah. but but I will say this though, Bill. They had eight. If something like eight four K movies playing and a thousand audio tracks playing in Logic, this is the Mac Pro that we've needed. Yeah, like real power. Real juice that can't be as easily because the thing is, people used to say, "Oh, and get PC, I can get a PC that's twice as powerful for that." But the, yeah. but this is probably one of as we're speaking. Obviously, things are going to change quick. It's one of the most powerful production. It's aimed more like that, yeah. um, quote unquote, professional yeah. uh, movie studio, like yeah. little movie studios. But yeah. I read one point five terabytes of RAM. One point five terabytes, terabytes of, of RAM. RAM. Yeah, I remember sending. Sending one of the geezers in the office here the the stats for it. I've, I found it. This is this is this is me nerding out on the stats, but you need to understand that this is absolutely that's insane. a ridiculous amount of RAM. We'll put it to put it in perspective. How much RAM you got in that laptop that's in front of you now? Uh, oh, I think it's, like, it's something ridiculous, like eight eight yeah, gigs. Eight gigs. Let me have a look. Yeah, eight gigs of RAM. Yeah, I got sixteen in this that's sitting in the studio with us. This has twenty eight core <laughs> Intel processor. Yeah. 28 cores right that is that is nuts right um 1.5 terabytes of ram that definitely trumps your eight there uh and you can get into it and mess around with the innards yeah they've, it's modular. they've made that easy for you as well which is quite quite important for them and they played uh they said it runs 20 percent faster than a windows workstation with the same with maxed out with some quite good graphics cards um and apple showed it playing 8K video and a thousand tracks in its Logic Pro Music software. Thousand Too good. tracks. Too good. I don't know who needs a track with a thousand layers, but yeah, we've got, have we got a rundown on the website for it? Yeah, yeah if you go on the website, there, yep. there, will, there will be a rundown of the Mac Pro. Okay, cool. Yep, yep, Check that all out. Uh, but yeah, so this guy redone Sonic. I mean, give him a Mac Pro and he'll be able to knock out a new Sonic trailer that looks up. Like he'll be able to do the whole film. In two days. Exactly. Uh, and before we get on Sunbroken as well, uh, speaking of Sonic, Bill, we uh, our new feature, Worth an Hour, where we play a game and let you know whether it's worth an hour of your time. Team Sonic Racing was on the cards. So, Team Sonic Racing, go. It's an enjoyable game. It is, it's very enjoyable. It's very different to like a regular racing game where it's just like you on your own start to finish. If you win, if you come first, you win. Yeah. This is more based on teamwork than it is on overall race position race position does come into play but it's all done on how well you work together as a team so if you was to win and your teammates were to finish in last and penultimate last there's no guarantee that you're gonna be the overall winners of that race right so you have to do well as a team so it's not like all about i i and me it's yeah. about you you kicking ass as a team wow all right cool so we're kind of used to and i like racing games that are like this as well kind of like computer game character driven racing mm. games you know like the likes of your Mario Karts and stuff how how does this differ to that because I know that's going to be the big comparison yeah, that's you've what got, we're going to talk about you've got things like like your your weapons and stuff in this game is called wisps you've got like your rockets and yeah. your cubes and ghosts and stuff like that they're called wisps so, yeah so it's very Wisp. similar yeah. but it's different in a way you've got like your boost bits on the, on the bottom and as I'm going back on the teamwork um, a lot of it focuses on boosting so if you drift you, you gain boost but if you um, like in Formula 1 you see like the Lewis Hamilton and Bottas line up behind one another to go inside their slipstream so they're not in the dirty air yeah. 
in this one, if you go behind them, you um, you charge up your boost bar, and if you come outside the slipstream, you will slingshot forward. So if you're going down a straight, when I cruise behind your car for a little while, and I get in the right, sli- I stay in your slipstream for a bit, I can then cut around, use that boost to cut around you. Yeah, because you're cutting through the air for me. Yeah, and I'm like riding behind you, and I get a little nice. Okay, cool. And what are the power ups like? Are they kind of like you know usual knocking, slowing people down, knocking them, making them small? That yeah, sort of it is. Stuff. Well, not necessarily making them small, it's just because they Team Sonic have their own sp- have their own specific ones. But yeah. they is like that. And if what the feature I liked about it is sometimes I personally weren't too much of a fan of the ghost one. So if I got the ghost one, I could press circle or B on on Xbox or whatever the corresponding button is on um, Nintendo Switch. If you push that button, you can give it to a teammate. So I don't want this one. You can have it. Or if you don't have a t- you don't have a power up and you're a bit of a sticky position. Say you're on the last corner and there's a race mm-hmm. that just gone past you. You need a rocket or something, or some something to give to you. Push circle, they'll give you a weapon or a boost, and then you can use that to like, obviously win the race. Okay, and have we got online for this as well? Come yes, there is online. Yep, yep. So you can jump there's, online, and me and you could t- could take over the world. Is it cross platform yet, or is it? Or is uh, it? I, I'm not, I don't think it's cross platform. No, there's there's not a lot of games out there that are cross platform. Yeah, we just got to be asking that now, haven't we? When it comes to mm. multiplayer games, it's just it's just a convo. It's what people are expecting now. Um, so what about the levels and stuff were they very Sonic themed uh, yeah so you, you the, the it is uh, like a you could you could tell that the, the tracks are, are Sonic mm-hmm. to be honest yeah, mm-hmm. they are like you got like the, you got your um, there's a specific level that you do where you have to collect rings so you know on, on like regular Sonic you just go around and collect rings this particular one you, you have to get as many as you can within a certain time frame and also in the actual normal racing games there is coins that you can pick up or rings should I say mm-hmm. you can pick up as you go around oh sick alright yeah rings that does sound very appropriate um, so speed modes in it Sonic is known for being a fast character so we've got like different speeds and stuff yeah so rather than um, you pick up you you can pick up speed boosts and stuff like that but each particular racer has their own specific speed that you can have so each race will either be a technical racer a speed racer or a power racer and All obviously right. Sonic would be as you would expect a speed racer. A speed racer. How hard is it to play then? Is there like some difficulty modes that we can sort of fiddle around with to get warm with the game? Um, there's normal, hard and expert and then I, I thought, okay, this this particular game, Team Sonic, I would say is aimed at more of a younger audience. I thought, okay, maybe I'll go for uh, I'll go for hard and see how, <laughs> see how well I do, see how, see how far I can win. Yeah. I done hard and yeah, I didn't, I didn't race. win. I lost every time. Seen, seen. All right, cool. All right, so is it worth an hour of time then? Definitely, yeah. So if you've got like a bunch of mates together, you can go online, team yeah. up and, and race together. I'd say it's definitely definitely worth an hour of your time. Sort of, or the sort of thing you could jump on for an hour before you go out for a drink with the boys or something like that? Or yeah, just, that. just jump on, give it an hour and then pop nice. out again. It's, right, a lot, cool. it's a lot of fun. All right, so that's how we've been killing time this week. We have got some cool shizzle coming up and E3 is around the corner as well. Um, and we're going to be covering that in a very interesting way. So that's how we're going to be killing time moving forward. Anyway, we... You're in the studio with Simon Brodkin. This show is called How to Kill an Hour. We talk about different ways to kill time. So the first thing we've got to say to Simon is, yo, how do you like to kill some time? Uh, most of my time recently has been spent working on this new Edinburgh show. That I'm, I'm the, I mean, let's go straight into the marketing. Let's just bang just in do it straight there. Fusing crack on, mate. First crack question, on. Crack first on. answer. Yeah. Tickets available. <laughs> see the following website, Instagram, Twitter, and I'm out of here later. Yeah, cool. See, so, that's how to kill an hour. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. How to kill 60 seconds. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm coming off the back of a huge lethal. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my, so my life is basically, I'm just thinking about how I'm spending my life now with that one open-ended question you should be a shrink i'm like suddenly thinking i'm wasting my life what am i doing (laughs) so (laughs) so that's been a lot of traveling that's been like the biggest tour that i've done like 180 dates up and down um i mean they're not every night and there's been um you know big gaps between there's been first leg second leg third leg and then a big edinburgh stretch as well in the middle of that and that's gone on for i don't know two years uh on and off which is great because it means people are buying tickets. And uh, But in my spare time, I have been working on this new thing for me, although obviously I've done the stunts, so that's most of them out of character. Yeah. Um, some in character, some a bit of a character. and uh, but, but, but this new thing of doing stand-up as myself, which has been occupying my time because it is a big... 
thing. Yeah. yeah. And this is you. This is Simon Brodkin this being Simon, Simon Brodkin. Simon Brodkin being so. Simon Brodkin, which is even weird for me at first. Just going, please welcome to the stage, Simon Brodkin. I'm like, is that, oh, Jeb, this is me. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, me. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> this is like your first fringe show as Simon Brodkin, but you're no stranger to Edinburgh Fringe. You've done, I'm trying to count them. It's like seven, eight. Is it, how many shows? Six? Seven? You know, I stopped making etchings on the bed. Yeah. Um, on the wall but this that's about right it's seasoned. um over seasoned pro yeah, that's it, yes yeah. um so not eligible for the newcomer award anymore nah, uh, sorry, but guys mate. this is new because i'm doing <laughs> please <laughs> so so i went up there first um i don't know how many years ago but over 10 um and that was a multi-character show, and yeah. one of those characters was Lee. Yeah, yeah. So I, never, I was never just about Lee. And in fact, in that show, I was sort of being myself. The show was Simon Brodkin, everyone but himself. And I was doing a sort of pseudo-intellectual sort of Edinburgh performer a breakdown of what comedy is. It was all a load of nonsense, full yeah. of jokes, of course. Um, and then Lee was in there, and there were a few other characters. And then to cut... A, lo- a long story short, Lee sort of took off after an- another Edinburgh, and then that was the character that I've been best known for. Yeah, and um, that was the one most suited to live, and that was the one took off, and then had the BBC Three series. Um, I'll just keep reading out my CV. Um, Crack on. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets are selling as with my management. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then so I've and then the 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 stunts, as I say, was sort of a bit more me. Yeah. But never stand up comedy as me. Never straight stand up. Never getting on stage. Here, welcome, Simon Brooking. Talk about you. Be you. Tell jokes as you. Okay, so we've gone from everyone but Simon show to Simon and no one else. That is a beautiful symmetry that I had not thought about. Yes, it's now called. It's the show is one hundred percent Simon Brodkin there we go so um, what, what like so and there were about 300 titles i went through so just that's that's i'm sticking with that one now there's right, no going back 100 <laughs> yeah. go for it mate wait can i get a little bit of that or is that already decided before you got here can what, i get a little the, change on that or a little percentage or um is that... what you mean the actual yeah, fuck yeah post has gone to print for fuck's sake, fuck's sake. oh we're allowed to swear uh yeah of course oh, fucking get yeah, in I'm... you bunch of cunts <laughs> That's too much, isn't it? I went, no, not oh, at all. Okay. <laughs> no, we got questions lined up for you that you might have that response to anyway. It's being BBC best behaviour. Oh, no, I fuck didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, no, we've all done BBC. <laughs> this, is a, this is a privately owned this is podcast. Proper. It's got explicit on the label, yeah. <laughs> this we've is done adult. This before. Throw as many cunts in as you want. <laughs> so, what, so what's, this, so what's it going to be like? Because I think it's because... Yeah. Because Lee was such a big character, mm. a lot of people, when they see you, they see Lee Nelson. And probably some people presume that that is who yes. you actually are. So yes. what's the difference with this show going to be like? What am I getting? Because it's, it's not the same thing. So if I've been to a Lee show last month or the month before, it's totally different. What's, what's so like? Lee is abs- absolutely that. He is a character. And obviously, the more you do a character, the more you have to fill him in. And he can't just be a two-dimensional thing, mm. especially doing stand-up comedy, because he has to live within the room. Yeah. And that is sort of the definition of stand-up, yeah. where the audience can take part. Yeah. Which is why it's a, just an amazing, amazing art form, guys. Uh, because you go to the theatre and shout, Oi, Brooklyn, you're a wanker! And there'll be outrage from the... Put- <laughs> Go- uh, guys, whereas in stand-up comedy, you've got to deal with that. And yeah. if you don't, you are you you are a worse comic because of that. And that's there's something kind of beautiful about that. You have to, you know, and some MCs get on stage and say, um, can we please no talking to the act, no this, no that. And I get why they're doing that. That's because they want the acts to get on with their act. But yeah. in some ways, there is a beautiful thing where audience members and you have to be a bit of a dick to interrupt let's be honest um or you know certain substance uh, through your system where you feel like you know what is gonna be so funny about this fun. well, look at this hey and then you come back and 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 and, and um so, so lee had to live and breathe and obviously as the years went on he couldn't just be a hundred percent um a you know council estate sort of point of view and he was never hateful he was always loving and he was always always full of joy and it just happened that he lived in that circumstance and it was never trying to punch down it was always a celebration um and obviously then he sort of had in inverted commas success because he can't have success he's a made-up fella um but you know live at the apollo 
and hosting that and yeah, being man. on a few big things and suddenly went out from the shorts and the cap to which felt weird to carry that on because suddenly I was going I, I sh- he should have a bit of money shouldn't he yeah, he's yeah, been telling yeah, yeah, a bit yeah, yeah. I mean I'm having most of it but give him a bit and we're going out and got him a suit I mean admittedly it still had the security tag on <laughs> but he had to start talking about things in the world and start having to address you know a few basic things and even you know recently with I don't know Brexit you know he had to talk about that you yeah. know I voted leave I regret it quite a lot I thought they was asking us about Scotland um, <laughs> and you know the stuff Donald Trump comes out with oh my god you know what's he say grab women by the pussy once you've been on television they let you get away with him oh my I mean I I, I couldn't believe I listened to him <laughs> so the, 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 he had to start talking in the real world yeah. so he grew up a little bit but he is always a character he is not real you yeah. know and yeah because I've been doing him so long and I guess it's a bit of a compliment the fact that people do think I'm Lee so when yeah, people man. see me in the street most of the time they say Lee uh, I mean it's happened twice in four years but when they stop me <laughs> they say Lee um, and so you know to come out of that and be oneself is suddenly opens up a whole new um, paint palette and different colours to paint with and suddenly you can talk about anything and, and talk about the things that you care about and the things that are real and you know I'm a dad and I've done um, and, and in, in the show there's I talk about one of the stunts which is on Donald Trump where um, I scattered hundreds of, of, of swastika and blazing golf balls around his feet um, and uh, if you've got a problem with that just have a look at some of the things he has said uh, <laughs> about Muslims and Mexicans and the, anyway the, the, so um, it, it was it was a, and and out of that came this whole barrage of, of hatred to me on social media which at the time I never really thought about because it was just part and parcel but now being me I've suddenly thought hang on there was some virulent anti-semitic hatred coming my way and i was outed by the grand wizard of the kkk david duke um as a jew and to be honest i already knew so i was <laughs> you pretty, pretty were aware of it i, yeah. I was aware it would be yeah, funny yeah. if that was how people found out whether they were yeah. jewish or not yeah it's david duke <laughs> on the phone honey it's the are you a jew or not a jew call oh my god i'm so nervous i really like my whole willy you are uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, and out of that comes being able to actually talk about that stuff and suddenly that's exploring who I am and things that are relevant to me because I'm you know I'm I'm addicted to the news and I'm addicted to what's going on in the world like most people if I, I you know feel if like if you care about things you're going to be a bit plugged in and um, so I'm able to now talk about that stuff talking about being a dad and how um you know when my my wife went away and left me with the kids for a week for the for the first time uh she went to america with her mum to see relatives and uh, i what i realized about a couple of hours in is that for the last nine years my wife behind my back has been doing all the childcare and you know uh, yeah yeah <laughs> <Rude awakening there. laughs> yeah exactly yeah. so just talking about those things yeah. and talking about you know uh, which is kind of cool yeah and plus you've kind of got all of these years and all of these air miles shall i say in comedy so you are a seasoned comedian and i I don't say that lightly plus i feel like you've got a totally fresh it feels like you're building it up again from the bottom do you know what i mean so is that quite an exciting feeling to feel like you've just got this whole new set of elements that people aren't ready to experience yet a hundred percent they feel not only does it feel like i'm starting again it literally had to be starting again from uh, the the basics of going back on the circuit and the circuit's unbelievable i think we are blessed in this country to have uh, uh, you know everyone says you know that what going on in their country is the best but, um but, america yeah, yeah. america yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i'm not good but i think the circuit the stand-up comedy circuit in this in london i believe from talk to people what it's like even parts of america is the best and almost any night of the week you can find two three on a weekend 10 15 places to do stuff and I was just back to the drawing board and back and stand-up's this weird thing because it is an apprenticeship like there's not many other jobs where you go do you want to become that thing just turn up and have a little go 
you know, and I'm a qualified doctor, so thank goodness they uh, just throw that in. Uh, chat in. Man, yeah. PhD on um, still doing some private work. Um, on <laughs> 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 that, um, so, uh, you know, imagine just going into that girl. I just want to have a go at being a doctor. Well, listen, grab the scalpel. Yeah. You can have five minutes yeah. before um, yeah. the main doctor's yeah. going to come back on and get the knife off you, and we'll just see how it goes yeah. down. I mean, and it, you could fuck up totally. <laughs> but you know what? You'd be fine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's all right. It'll come out in a wash. You know exactly. I mean? This is how people people learn in this job okay yeah um and 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 so you, with stand up you learn so to a certain extent i had all these air miles on me i know what you're saying you're calling me old i get that no <laughs> no i've been doing i'm i'm fairly experienced stand up but it's as char- in character and it's 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 just it's just different there is just this <clears throat> There is this, um, you know, mindset and this um, way of obviously way of speaking and just way of walking the way everything the way you hold the microphone the way you address the crowd the way the whole thing I have been programmed that is my muscle memory as a live performer to be Lee <coughs> um, to be Lee and so although all that experience has some relevance I'm not saying it was totally starting again but to go and go now it's time for Simon Brockin oh, oh my god how do I hold the microphone how do mm. I sound what do I talk about ah. mm. and it really was like starting again and I've had some humiliating nights on the way because obviously when you step on and you're sort of a little bit known especially by the comics and you go yeah. oh right he, he's he been a bit shit isn't he yeah, this, is the, this is the worst Lee Nelson I've seen nothing yeah, yeah, like yeah. him what the d- fuck d- is d- that d- well occasionally yeah. there's been like um, oh my god I'd like to have like um, I mean I'm, I'm out of that now I'm yeah. out but at first the first few gigs it was like I wish I had this cap in a glass yeah saying break in case yeah. of emergency <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 you are you legends I'm back yeah. phew yeah. 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 so it's been going back learning the craft again from a different point of view yeah and and then a whole wealth of experience and wealth of life that i'm able to now start to talk about so i'm i'm excited about it i look forward to it man i look forward to seeing you on the stage more because it's like with you i think that the other elements of your comedy that you've kind of expressed are way it's like i don't want to call lee nelson not deep but he's an entertaining character you go and 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 laugh at him and whilst he'll have some jibes that have got political elements to them like you said you spoke about brexit and trump this whole other side of you, Simon, is like you do some things that are funny, but they're deep. Like you mentioned like the Trump prank, right? This is no light thing. You got around the secret fucking service, bro. <laughs> this, this isn't like I'm not over exaggerating at all. You got around the secret service and managed to pull a prank on somebody. Right. So if you can just to put this into, into perspective, because I want to know how you how you break down these pranks. Like you're not meant to go and throw anything at the president. Right. You managed to throw a selection of things which were round shaped that could have <laughs> exploded at some point, right? <laughs> but you managed to do it as a prank. We'll get back to that in a sec. But like when you're setting up your pranks, I felt like during the show it, I was watching a heist scene from a movie. Can you just explain to our listener how you set your pranks up, how you managed to get around security and stuff like that? Because it's no, it's no small task. You don't just go, all oh, right, I'm going to turn up on the day and fuck around. You actually do research and stuff, right? Yeah, um, you said listener. I'm hoping there's going to be more than one. You know, we, do, we, just, we just we just address our listener because you know what? You know, on YouTube, you go, "Hey guys," I'm like, yeah. I'm "See like, the bloke sitting outside <laughs> on the chair." It's me. Should we just invite him it's in? Me. I'm talking to myself. Uh, I always talk to the listener as a listener because it's like one person That's listening nice, at a time. Nice. It's intimate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that made me suddenly worried. I'm like, really? Let's just bring him in. Let's just take the cans off our head. Let's just chat. Let's involve them. All right, come in, mate. Come in, Paul. Colin. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the pranks are. Um, something look with anything in life if you're going to do it well it it's not easy yeah. and I think you know we've all seen prank shows and god love them they've got more viewing figures than me where people have hidden in a bin and jumped out when old ladies thrown a chocolate wrapper in yeah. and going gotcha yeah, and everyone's like sick yeah, yeah, amazing yeah, yeah, genius yeah. Yeah. what she doesn't know is that Adam is hidden in the bin <laughs> <laughs> just wait just wait and here it goes so um and what i'm trying to do i love that moment where real life and comedy come together mm. and obviously you can you know say you can get that in a in a, in a stand-up comedy club and you can because it's a real person with their real things coming together in the real world but if you can get a 
um, a, a you know, the, for example, let's take the the Theresa May one, the P forty five. So you know, the thought of you've got this prime minister who had just announced that she was strong and stable. She had a majority in 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 the House of Parliament, and then she went for a walk with Philip. Um, do you remember that she came back from that walk with Philip and said uh, uh, whether she took some shrooms or what she ate in that field but she was like she hit the blunt she, <laughs> she hit the blunt bro she <laughs> hit the blunt she doesn't inhale but she had yeah, one yeah. lug um, and um, she then said you know let's let's have this election which is obviously an absolute crossroads for her strong and stable suddenly no majority in parliament she was looking I mean the fact that she's clung on for this long is, is, is quite something but and I was suddenly thinking, you know, the whole a lot of not the whole can't speak for that, but a lot of people are thinking she she shouldn't really be in this job. She is anything but what she's saying. And that's, you know, if take away all the policies that I just, you know, cannot agree with no matter who is representing them. And I thought, you know, so let's just think there's a little move in the country going. We want to get rid of the prime minister. Wouldn't it be funny if uh, instead of shouting and screaming about it, just politely give someone like you would in every other job a p45 and then from that moment you've got the okay is that possible how is it possible where is it possible what do i need to do it and from that moment on it turns into that high style feel which you saw in the channel 4 documentary where they followed me for a year which didn't include that one but did include trump and britain's got talent and um philip green um one on 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 the um the, the, that was the naughty as well man, dude. yeah that was naughty as well that yeah. was naughty. Yeah. hopefully they're all naughty yeah oh very oh <laughs> you don't yeah, want to do a prank it was yeah, great stuff oh, it, was right. very naughty. Yeah, it wasn't very naughty it was, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you got his permission for that yeah, one yeah. <laughs> So, um, th th so f from that moment where you've got all these, the central idea, and then you've got springing off it just hundreds of questions and working out and permutations, and that is where it gets, you know, a little uh, Ocean's Eleven like, right. and you've got things on the wall and working out and times and things because you are dealing with relentless, never ending list of unknowns because you're not meant to be there and because the thing you are meant to be doing is not meant to happen and because you're often doing things a little illegal um, you there's just so many you don't know the answer you don't know the answer that says so if that and if that and what about that and always thinking and, and because I think I've got one of those minds that's always like double think it can it want it was it well what if what if, which is great um, not great for sleeping at night but, ah, yeah, yeah. but great have I locked the back door yeah. have I locked the back did I lock all, all 15 of the locks or just 14 fuck 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 yeah. Yeah. that was you yeah every night yeah. <laughs> me and my listener yeah. get him to check <laughs> um, they're allowed out the basement <laughs> so, yeah, on, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so and then from there that's you know yeah. and, 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 and even on the day um, you know, for example, that one where I, I, I went along, and then uh, uh, to the to that was given to at the Tory Party conference. Obviously, the sort of funny thing about that is to get past Donald Trump security took you know months of of, of planning and, 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 and fake names and disguises and bag swaps and getting past the CIA, the FBI, and Secret Service and his own personal bodyguards. And to when I gave Theresa May the P forty five to to, to to get past her security, I applied for a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Using my name. That hurt a little bit. Oh, Nothing. No. No. Oh, no. A host alive the Apollo. No. Nah. To kill an hour podcast. Nah, Nothing. Nah. Oh, from now on. Oh, yeah. You're on all sorts of lists, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Colin's yeah. on the door. Oh. I'm screwed. <laughs> um, so, um, and that's why they're kind of fun and I yeah. think enjoyable to to watch because there's that the, 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 there's that will it won't it happen and you don't know until that actually happens and the Donald Trump one funnily enough I should have been the most worried of all of them that I was going to get shot because yeah. the, 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 the police did tell me they were about to draw arms they heard it on, the, on, on their radios uh, but I wasn't thinking about that at all because I was just worried about the next phase of the stunt whereas the Theresa May one I was a little more worried because at that stage before I was giving it to her I thought okay you know what, I think this is now in place. And as soon as you've got that little spare brain space, then you can start to worry. But before that, yeah. I didn't even think about that with Donald Trump because there was this one key moment I didn't know would happen until it actually happened. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> like I mean, to say that you're not dedicated to a prank would be would be a lie, mate. Cause yeah, yeah. To, well, you to almost in. get shot. All yeah, in. you went all in, and I don't want to spoil it because I mean, I'd love to put a link to it in, in the show description, but the bag swap that you mentioned, all the little elements that you put in place, 
it's just amazing. But also, I'm like, it's it's was it you and a, a few people, a couple of people that were together in on the prank? I know you had cameramen, but without them, so it's always been me, myself, and I, and 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 sometimes that's bad. I mean, look, I talk to people. I will say, yeah. you know, I'll have a couple of close. Um, you know, confidants or whatever they're called, without sounding pretentious, but who I will speak to and say, "Look, bounce it," and they'll just. But it is me, myself, and I doing the thing, and that's great because I like part of the reason I hated medicine is because you're in the NHS, and the yeah. NHS is the ultimate huge machine and you are this teeny teeny little cog and to change anything forget about it because it is just this oil tanker slowly chugging along and you you, (laughs) well yeah Yeah, you're pulling a sinking thing yeah yeah, because of the tories it's a little bit um there's been just 10 years of horrible um yeah it's 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 been it's 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 proper fuck in um to sum it up um uh, just hearing through it is proper fucked yeah, it's pro- <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. my uh, official input on that <laughs> proper um, fuck. it's probably it's proper fuck. it's not on its hands and knees mm-hmm. it's on its um uh it's it's, it's not on its knees it's on its hands and knees yeah, getting 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 fucked yeah 100%. um so but it's it's this amazing thing and, and obviously it's incredible but me as someone in there always asking questions always do we have to uh, and you forget about this and then you go to stand up comedy and you are the the writer the performer the director the producer everything so if something goes wrong i mean obviously every stand-up including myself it's the audience it's the mm. room yeah of course the microphone yeah, of course it is yeah, it was yeah, of course. too too there's a humidity too in humid, here i'm yeah, never performing yeah. in that place again the comedy store it's too humid <laughs> so um and and the beauty again when you do stunts is it's all on me yeah and that's great because sometimes when you rely on someone else did you do that? Oh, I forgot. Or, or there's just I know that the buck stops with me, yeah. and that is 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 in you calls to be very nimble on your feet. Cause when you're meant to, when you're in places you're not meant to be, the last thing you want to do is go. Okay, guys, all nine of us, let's quickly sneak and move sides. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on the Theresa May one. Yeah. I'd gone to the, they'd have these sessions at party conference. Yeah. Um, and so I think the session before her off memory was Boris Johnson. And so I was in there, case in the joint and just checking it out and working out how I was thinking of doing it. And then felt reasonably confident, came back for the next session. And um, I've, got, I've got to thank, there was a lady there because you're queuing up for hours. You're with all these diehard Tories. I think anyone who attends party conference of whatever party, they're a little bit, just a little bit you know not yeah. completely um um the most normal sociable of people they're they're fans real hardcore fans not of liverpool or manchester city but you know c- come on conservatives come on let that they yeah. and so and obviously you can imagine the sort of people who get the tory party conference so and i went there and basically they all are desperate to be as close to the you know the whoever's the the leader whoever's you know giving the big talk of 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 that conference and so they are properly it's handbag whacking time yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah and you're there and you're queuing and you're queuing for for ages and I've got to thank this one lady who I just strung her the biggest bunch of lies that I think I've ever come up with in my life just because she was just talking and talking and talking I mean when they start asking you where do you live and then you've got to make that but then oh, it goes shit. to stack of lies when you're with someone for hours go oh, so who's your local MP do oh! you know I'm at the Tory party conference tell them I'm a massive fan of the Tories and I'm dressed up as this sort of Tory boy you know yeah absolutely love it yeah you know, you know. and uh, so who's your local MP then dear I'm like, let me just quickly go to the toilet and Google it. And um, and she was brilliant because when we started going in, she found a little a little route past everyone else and was able to get us like really close to the front. So God bless her, this lovely lady um, who I talked nonsense for for like two or three hours and helped me get that seat at the front. She must feel a teeny bit guilty. She as must well. hate you. She must bit, yeah. hate. Yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> it might not have twigged Fucking yet. Hell. I might yeah. not have twigged. Yeah. So um, and I got this great seat exactly where I needed to be, having seen Boris Johnson speak in the session before because they chuck everyone out and reset the room. Um, with security and, and, and whatnot and then I uh, could go in and they'd changed the whole thing around so I'm sitting in the seat that was perfect and I'm like oh my god they've swapped it for the Prime Minister 
So all the cameras were on the other side, all the channels were on the other side, as in channels for me to physically walk through. Yeah. And so all those little things, those little last minute things, being one person is amazing because instead of going, okay, guys, everyone up, let's, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, like 10 of you walking to the other end of the cinema in a packed cinema, you can just quickly, lightly walk around and move. And, 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 and so being a one man show is actually really useful obviously for the channel four thing channel four basically followed me for the year and right. which was which yeah. was cool which was yeah. cool um but um you know i didn't there were i didn't have like a sort of um 007 uh was it minority reports with tom with tom cruise with like 40 people with screens and, and yeah shit. It's, but um, you, you pulled off a big feat you're somebody you're probably one of the only people that's managed to bamboozle that many independent security services worldwide you do know that right i mean there's no official world record for that but you've got to be <laughs> one of the only people that's publicly known that's done that you know i mean? love there to be the and congratulations uh, for being the world record holder of, yeah. Yeah, and we didn't invite him here tonight. He has to break in yeah, to prove his worth, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to collect his award. And the winner is <laughs> me. Yeah, hey! yeah, nice, nice turn, nice reveal. Bit, yeah. But um, I think if you weren't who you were, you probably would have been off right now. That's not uh, even yeah, a joke. Yeah. So if I was sitting there and I was like head of a security service of some sorts, I'd be like, this fucking prick. Yeah. yeah, it's only a matter of time till he gets us or someone else. Let's just get rid of him. I'm su- Simon Brookin, lead. Oh, we're fucked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, well, I, I'm surprised I haven't got a call from someone in the security. You know, like when they ask the hackers, yeah, man, to them work for the bank or whatever. I'm surprised, but you know, what I mean, you can't trust a comedian, can you? You can't. If there's an opportunity there, I'm like, ah, I did put a whoopee cushion on Trump's chair. That was me. It's funny. <laughs> that would be sick. That would be a sick show if you were like just doing some comedy during one night and the other night you were just, I don't know, in Alaska. Security. Killing somebody. I don't know. <laughs> sick. A fucking sick twist. Um, another element that I've seen from you is is your roasting element. I just, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I rewatched the roast battle that you did with Dame Baptiste. You, you popped it. on the show. Yeah, that was uh, my debut as me on the telly. Um, <laughs> Simon man it's like now you're saying it's your debut like I understand because it's like on Roast Battle people come with a point to prove and I think Dane's good right he's great he was great so when he, I heard I, I think yeah. I think he did me he did me that night I think he uh, he had a good one I think you but I think you both had there was I mean I've not broken it down to points I think it was no clear winner right yeah but I think he did well but like as your first reveal as Simon on on, on TV I feel like the fact that you went for Jimmy Carr as well, one of the hosts, while you were roasting, <laughs> yeah. that was very sexy. That was very sexy. How was, how was it coming out there and being yourself and talking about coming on someone's twin sister? But yeah. anyway. <laughs> you really are allowed to yeah. even like <laughs> yeah, a show. Of course, so of let's read out the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, that was... Um, look, I think they they saw me doing a tiny little gig in a little comedy club in Angel, trying out stuff. This was you know months and months ago, and I was just starting out to do stuff as myself yeah. out of character. And they said, "Yeah, come on, roast battle. We'd like to have you." I'm thinking, "Fine, you know, like, what's what's going to be the problem with that?" But actually, it's quite. It's like in boxing terms, it's like bare knuckle, no holes barred. You know, it's it's brutal. Oh, it's yeah. a little bit like it reminds me because you've got Jimmy there, Jimmy Carr, and you've got um, um, uh, who else have you got? You've got um, who are the other two judges? Um, Catherine Ryan, Catherine Ryan, Catherine Ryan, Jonathan Ross. Thank you. Sorry, Colin. got Billy there. Cheers, Bill. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, we knew that. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AK the listener. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Uh, Catherine Ryan, Jonathan Ross and Jimmy Carr all brilliantly funny all brilliantly successful and um, they're sat high up in this um, it's, 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 it's like a sort of it's, it, well, it's, 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 it's in this sort of it's not a theatre it's like mm. a pl- they've put some seats in um, in South London in the Apollo or the, I don't know anyway yeah. it's this little club venue and uh, it's all quite metallic and brutal and you've got these three judges up there and then they bring on the two you know normally newer comics especially compared to them and so it's a little bit reminds me of and then the, we just battle it out to the death and it sort of reminds me in Rome you know where you've got Caesar, like, who wants to see one slave freed? Mm. And the crowd, like, Rah! kill each other. And everyone's going, yeah, death, death, <laughs> death. And they're watching and laughing on. It's, but it is, it's pretty brutal. Um, it is pretty. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mate, there's, yeah. there's, there's, it, there's, like, they don't you don't hold back like, there's, there's like, no holding back there is no holding back um and what we um we actually said to each other let, let's let's not really tell each other what we're doing oh great so you, in had, hindsight, no, you had no, no idea. idea in hindsight i probably would have said to each other you know what let's just let's just practice our let's, pra- <laughs> let's just make it good yeah let's just practice our lines on each other but there we're like no nah, this is going to be proper this is sport it's yeah. like telling the you know the goalkeeper which way you're going to shoot just yeah. to make the spe- save look spectacular. Yeah. This was like, we're going to take this seriously, mate. And it's, you know, you got, it, it's, it's fun. Look, it's a, it's, it's a laugh. And yeah, I did have a, a little go at Jimmy and I think at, at Catherine and, 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 and Jonathan, I think they, I don't know how many made it in, but, um, Jimmy was amazing. I mean, Jimmy was a lovely, he was really supportive and he yeah. was, he was, um, yeah, I, he, he texted me off the show saying, you're right, just checking you're right, mate. <laughs> you, know, you know it's been brutal when that happened, when Jimmy Carr, uh, heart, of, heart of stone, of, yeah. you know, Jimmy Carr texts you, are you all right, Simon? Kiss, kiss, kiss. Nah, he's <laughs> fucking with you. He's fucking with you. Jimmy, Jimmy was like, yeah, let's, what can we do to wind him up? You are right, mate? You're right, don't cry. Don't cry, yeah, mate. Exactly. Don't cry, yeah. um, but yeah, no, it was good, man. Like, just to, just to put it in perspective for you, the listener, uh, <laughs> Jewish man versus black man. Jewish man versus is black man no fucking around it's no great. dicking around great. Dame beforehand was like Dame was great he played all the right games he yeah. played the mental games before and he was like I'm not going to mention anything about you being Jewish um, I'm like you sure he's got yeah did he mother <laughs> f- <laughs> like n- shout out number one and they did this didn't make it into yeah. the show because it's like eight rounds and they chop yeah. it down to four whatever it was like your dead granddad is rolling in his mass grape. I'm like, mother, you told me you weren't mentioning. What the f- <laughs> fuck? Ah, yeah. Mum. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I think in this day and age where I feel like sometimes a lot of comedians are challenged with the uh, controversial things they say, they've made a perfect environment for you guys to just go off the rails and take it. To yeah. F- take it into the stratosphere. It's, it's fun. But he really went, he really went for the mass grave. He went, he went in hard on the mass grave. And look, don't blame me. That's, that's what it's about. Yeah, but he he played the mind games beforehand. You know, it's yesterday. like when a tennis player, you know, is limbering up and they pretend yeah. they've got a hamstring injury, a little bit tense. Yeah. First serve, <laughs> straight down. What? You know what a geezer, <laughs> man. So, um, how far away does this feel from your like life of medicine, then, man? Ah, <laughs> well, again, you know, that medicine is something that I had not thought about or engaged with for uh, you know a, a, a long time. I yeah. thought about myself doing it obviously i've still got you know medic mates all of whom are well they've gone through the jealousy phase now they're just resigned to it <laughs> we should have left yeah. um and but th- d- doing the show as me suddenly like you know what i was a doctor that's sort of quite interesting yeah and talking about you know what that was like and having you know and my problem was i couldn't take anything seriously and you know when grown men show you their testicles <laughs> this is like, what <laughs> you, show, you, show, you show me a dick you, me, <laughs> you know and that's like the least you want yeah, from your, yeah. your, 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 your your doctor to just not laugh in your face I don't think I want anyone to balls. laugh at my penis you you just just don't don't want it, I don't want someone to look at my brain an appropriate time just where you get your dick out and people just go <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know elephant impression when you get yeah, the pockets. Yeah, yeah. Out, oh yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was just me. Yeah. So, and what that was like, and um, y- you know, and, and it is fun to think about that and um, telling a few stories, you know, and how working late night shifts in A and E, you know, we used to call them Weatherspoons after parties, oh, and uh, yeah. you know, one time someone fell into the canal and nearly drowned, and. I thought, how about we put them in a bowl of rice? And you know, <laughs> so it was never, it was never the perfect, you know, feel for me. Not that I don't love that whole thing and and, and science and biology, and it still absolutely fascinates me and all the learning and and and, and I, I love that. You know, yeah, and I love the patient interaction, but it's it's you've got to really want it to stay in it because it's not yeah. a bed of roses. But it was more the pull of comedy going, you know, give that a go, give that a go. Yeah. Um, and how um, I was chatting to someone about it the other day, again, starting doing these interviews and talking about my real life suddenly, which is new and go, you know, basically I decided to do comedy and then just ended medicine, just drove to London, just said, right, I'm, I'm going to be a comedian now. Which <laughs> is obviously in hindsight, what? Oh, <laughs> Don't be an idiot, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, man. What's like the weirdest element? What do you want me to look at? This is always leading. What do you want me to have a look at? A lump, a bump? 
I get was about out. to get my dick get out, out. But I wanted to be laughed at. About. <laughs> <laughs> I promise <laughs> you, know? I've got out my system. Uh, that's what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what's the weirdest ailment that you've had? I don't know if this is like breaking. As in me? Co- no, that you've seen. Like, what's the weirdest thing someone's whipped out apart from a comedic penis? You know what? Whatever they're all, that they're all comedic. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Willie's is fu- Willie's yeah. funny, right? I mean, um, uh, so <laughs> you know, you're Adam K, uh, who is uh, a, a, an ex medic turned comedian and um, a friend of mine, and, and he's written that book. Um, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, like sold twelve zillion copies, and he's just packed with stories and funny moments and anecdotes and. Um, and I think back to my time, like I got like half a page, maybe. <laughs> <I've> got, <laughs> like I, 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 um, he is, he is just bursting with them. I got a terrible memory, and I probably should have written down a few more at the time. Yeah, but um, I mean, I've done some bad things. I remember okay, this is. It's funny to me, and it's not funny to the patient. Let's be honest. Well, of course, I did that whole Doctor Bob character that came out of of that, yeah, yeah. Um, which was this incompetent doctor who had just no idea what he was doing, and um, the power that he yielded over patients just because he was a doctor. That was all off the back of doctors who I worked with. But there was one time back in the day when you're when when you're a junior doctor, you are really a little bit of a dog's body you're going around and you're doing little odd jobs here and then you're suddenly you're on your first night shift and you're like the only doctor on and um like doctor we need you they bleep you there's this bleep it's like obviously classic nhs like so, using a system that yeah. was last used in the real world in 1991 by drug dealers in los angeles with a pager <laughs> And here, that is the system. I think it is still the system. Bleeps. In fact, I heard someone tell me the other day that it was that the NHS is the biggest user of these paging devices in the world because obviously everyone's moved on, NHS. Like, (laughs) you got (laughs) it's time to just put them away. Um, I mean, they'll be, I don't know what they're on to next. They'll be like, oh my God, email. Yeah. Jesus. (laughs) Fuck. So you get bleeped. You have your bleep number. Mine was 118. Still remember it now. And um uh, and 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 it's this little thing you carry with you, and when you're at night, you sleep in the hospital in this bleak accommodation. This is what I mean by I really want to love it to carry on working in it because it is not easy. You're staying in these kind of derelict style, you know, like Chernobyl hotels that time forgot in the because they don't. They, yeah. It's like in the NHS, you've got a limited amount of money. So what are you going to do? What should we do, guys? Should we get this new machine that can save lives or? Should we do up the doctor's accommodation so it looks like Google offices? <laughs> Who votes doctors? You know, it, it, yeah, so it's yeah. a no-brainer. So everything that is not essential is sort of crumbling, and you can understand why. It doesn't make it any less galling when you go into a production company that makes, like, I don't know, cash in the attic. Yeah. That is just like, you know, the, hello, can I help you, sir? This receptionist, and there's like a 40-inch TV or whatever, and there's like nibbles, and you get, you like a glass of champagne while you wait. Yeah. And then in the NHS waiting room, it's like, the sign is just barely holding on with one nail because they don't have the the money to waste and to burn. So um, you're sleeping in this accommodation and you are um, you, you you try and go to sleep and then you you put your bleep down and you just get woken time after time after time and often by quite mundane things like doctor. Sorry to mind you. I worked in Manchester, so all my nurses sound like that. Sorry to mind you, doctor. Um, just need you to come down and uh, this patient can sleep. Is there any way you can give him paracetamol? Um, you're like, you are calling me up to give paracetamol. Oh, my God. And, of course, rules are rules, and yeah. they're not allowed to give paracetamol. Even the patient could say to the nurse, here is £10 or whatever, a quid. Please just pop down to Boots, get me a pack of paracetamol, and they're allowed to do that. But they're not allowed to dispense paracetamol from the NHS because they haven't done the course or whatever. So you're constantly Jesus. getting interrupted to like prescribe people paracetamol and like um, laxatives. She's, but she's bunged up, doctor. She's bunged up. Um, yeah, but some of those painkillers, I found out the hard way, they fucking stiff they do. you up. They why stif- did, they why don't they give you laxatives with like I don't know, like your di- <laughs> you dihydrocodone? You need to talk what? to your dealer. Yeah, mate, it bunged me right up. <laughs> Surely. You've got experience yeah, on that. He should have given me like some bananas or some <laughs> celery or something, a salad with it. Fuck it. two bags and <laughs> some yeah, carrot juice. Some carrot juice. So, so the, the, yeah, the ones that are, 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 are codeine based and, yeah. uh, and morphine based, they bung you up. They slow down. Yeah. Let's get into medicine here, listener. Yeah. Yeah. They, slow, <laughs> they slow down your gut. Your gut's constantly moving. And then hence comes out as this, you know, yeah. poop. And then what happens when you have a codeine? It stops it moving. So everything just stops. So yes, you should absolutely, whoever's your doctor, I'll, you know, 
yeah, I'll have a word I'll have a word so so, so uh, what were you going to say you no, I was just going to say like you're taking a painkiller so you might not know if you're having a few if you're hurting yourself by pushing too hard because you're on a painkiller it's a vicious just saying, cycle it's a vicious cycle you could end I can up see, I can being see. hurt <laughs> glad that it happened Let's, glad that it happened at an age when you're young uh, enough to recover from it I I'm wondered just saying. why you were sitting on nine pillows Yo, I, 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 on my side as well I've been mean, leaning over slightly I need a donut <laughs> you're yeah. on the chair the microphone's on the floor yeah um, so <laughs> so you go along and, and, and yeah. you have to go along and do all yeah. this a lot of the things you're asking to put in ventflons which is like the the needle that you okay. put into right. the vein to get access for yeah. all the medications that goes in intravenously and uh, I, I went along and uh, you please sorry to my dear doctor it's four in the morning I can't believe you're doing this just need um, a line into Mr. whatever his name mm. was came down mm. and um, I'm, I'm half asleep and this is true one time I walked onto the ward and I looked and I was wearing my dressing gown not my white coat <laughs> I grabbed <laughs> <laughs> I have one hook on the back, yeah. one, but that's amazing. Right? That's that is how tired and go- oh my god! And you're that stage. You're like, you know what? Forget about it. <laughs> just yeah, keep walking. It, keep walking. <laughs> wear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be like, own it. So, so, <laughs> so um, I went in, put the curtains around this patient, put go to put the line in. I'm um, like, but basically, I'd use. There's all different colours. The goes from blue. I can't remember which is the thinnest to greys, which is the thickest. And I needed like a thick line in this guy. And I put it in and I was really having trouble. And that is not nice. Let me tell you now to all the patients who I didn't get my line in first time. Big sorry. Um, come to my show. Um, you know, just show me your veins on the door and I'll recognize that you are a genuine case because there'll be scars all over this. So you're, you're putting this, this this thing in. I was struggling, pushing me around the, and you try different areas. And then wham, got it in. I thought I'd got it in. I'm sprayed with blood. like psh- pulsing blood I'm like oh fuck <sighs> I've gone into his artery instead of his vein the Shit. arteries the the, the the ones that come away from the heart full of high pressure oxygenated blood the veins are like the little trickly bluey ones that are yeah. just going back slowly to your to, to, to your heart and um, anyway it's just it's just it was it was nuts it was like oh my god it was like three in the morning and I'm just like if anyone could have seen what was going on it must look like some horror film because I'm there with his bedside light on for light and all you can see is this silhouette of me like desperately trying to stem this pump of blood coming oh. out of this poor fella um, so sorry Mr. Carswell <laughs> <laughs> and it was at that moment you realised comedy yeah, yeah, might yeah, be yeah, yeah. <laughs> better thing is anyone else f- finding this funny <laughs> <laughs> right so maybe I can get your medical opinion on this this is a question we've asked a lot of our guests <laughs> we've got a very our strongest opinions have come from comedians and it's there's two types of people in this world and one doesn't know the other exists until we have this conversation so just just Roll with me on this. You, you've had a big dinner the night before. Fibrous dinner. No codeine. I'm there. Right. Codeine free dinner. You have that. Why not try it? I don't know if you're a morning shit after a coffee kind of guy or like, I don't know. It depends. You're in shape. You look like you have that good amount of fiber in you. So. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a morning guy. Morning guy. And you know what? Sometimes evening. Okay, cool. But M- morning and evening. I'm a morning guy. Right, I'm a morning enough. guy. So I like that routine. Cool. So it's your morning movement. <laughs> My MM. MM. You've taken a, it's been a substantial shape. And you wipe your ass. <laughs> Are you a gentleman who stays seated during this procedure mm. or do you stand up to wipe your oh ass? My God, I think I might be bridging the divide. I've got this sort of new half up, half down technique that I obviously will be demonstrating in my new show because that's mostly what I've got to talk about. Yeah. Where you're kind of, I mean, it's also great for quad work um, and you just press yourself up and you're sort of half up, half down. I'd say those are the final few though. Really? Um, you don't want to be rushing into that there you like your finishers <laughs> are you serious but sit are down s- to start okay with, yeah. so you sit down to start we don't squat throughout the whole no, thing no, 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 that's, no, you know you've got to be a bodybuilder yeah, to do yeah, that. yeah that, 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 I mean you would just get that serious uh, lactic acid build up I couldn't do that fair enough so from a medical <laughs> from a medical uh, uh Point of view. Medical. Is yep. it better to stand up this is or classic stay seated year while you one. This is classic year one junior doctor stuff. First I mean, lesson. Yeah, for the consultants always yeah. sat us around and go, guys, this is it. Forget everything you learned. Forget <laughs> everything you learned back at med school, gentlemen. <laughs> at med school, gentlemen, this is the real beans. How do you guys wipe your ass? Gentlemen, this is not a drill. 
get out there. <laughs> give me four. So four wipes. Yeah. Bro, keep, fold, keep it fold. coming. <laughs> <laughs> so um uh shit, I've forgotten the question. Oh yeah, so <laughs> So yeah, so there's like a really strong divide. So like the people that sit yes, are it, like, it, how it. the fuck can you stand up? And the standards are like, how the fuck do you sit down when you wipe right? So you're you're thinking about it. So I'm you, thinking, I'm demonstrating there has to be a cheek wipe uh lift. So you lift. so you do a cheek lift, yeah. A cheeky cheek lift. Yeah, that's it. Jeez, man, this is not something that I I realise now that I've given this far too little thought. Please, let's explore this, this together. It's that, a great way um, to wrap the episode up. Uh, obviously not on air, but mm-hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is, this is, this is, you open up the richness of humanity. There's always another way to do it. There's always another thing to learn. Yeah. And we can all learn off each other. <laughs> um and, like and, and 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 so yeah there's the there's this there's the prostate there's the prostrate okay that's not the prostate there's the prostrate right. there's the sitting down there's the one lifter on the right there's the lifter on the side and then there's the kind of up and down there's we've what we've got five different techniques and we've only been talking about this for like 45 minutes and there's people that go wipe in the front as well i'm just saying front wipers yeah jesus Matt I Richardson, don't wanna, i just don't Matt want to put it out yeah I, I, yeah i wondered what that that that, that mark was wired, wired a bit differently that lad so <laughs> <laughs> he went into great detail about that but yeah all right well, cool. i've got kids so this is okay. easy talk for me you know yeah, yeah, front yeah. wipers i you know might have squirmed about this a little ago now i'm i'm get you you have to learn technique for yourself and on to others you know? yeah. and you've got to pass that down as a father if I can teach my kids one thing and that is a good wiping technique son daughter let's sit down birds and the bees chat dad no nah. it's more than that it's the wipe chat yeah and you hold um, up a, you hold up a, a white pair of pants with two brown stains and say yeah, this is the this, enemy this is <laughs> this <laughs> if you don't if you don't focus this is what you could become yeah um I, have I answered your question? I'm not even sure. I, I don't know. Lost. I, I, I think you just like, wanted I feel to, like I've heard were... about chatting shit, but this has taken it to another level. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like I've asked you if you're a sitter or a stander, mm. and then you're like a, a hoverer. My bets yeah. a hoverer. You're a hoverer. You kind of like this whole new. I'm just thinking. Yeah. I think I'm. Because um, I'm like a lean. I like lean. A leaner. So, which counts as a sit, apparently, which I'll take. <sighs> this is the sort of thing that we should have put to the country in the referendum. We forget, forget the forget things that don't matter. Like leaving you, yeah. it's what should be the national wipe technique, and we can be start be prouding about about that and exporting that 100%. around the world, taking um, over countries, making sure that they all wipe their ass yeah, the, right <laughs> the way, British yeah. way. Right, <laughs> you're doing that the British way, son. That's it, good <laughs> lads. That's it, son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two ply, two ply. <laughs> but um, no, thanks for coming on the show, man. I appreciate that, and uh, thanks for killing an hour with us, man been great been a pleasure uh, I look forward to the show it's, it's nice to be talking to Simon man it's, re- it it's really cool like, to it? be talking yeah. as myself yes will there be any more of your characters in the future is this the end of your other characters or do you feel like you want to leave the door open not the end not the end um, you know that there's definitely when I do Lee when I do Jason Bent you know I've flicked out a couple of, of little mini things recently yeah. a couple of little vids Jason Bent um, yeah you know I'm um, just going to be in a football at um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they always go down beautifully and as I say I've just yeah. come off the back of a very very big lead to all the biggest I've done so I think I'll be an idiot to, to when I'm still giving me pleasure and people out there pleasure to say um, that they are closed um, nice. but I need to know what their wiping technique is now in character <laughs> just saying yeah, when just you're, when you're, you know, people want to know that <laughs> Lee you stand up or sit down yeah. exactly uh, so but I'm doing stand up comedy Ah. Um, see the link there ah I see that very good so and, uh, so yeah I, I, right. there, there is definitely life in the characters in the future but for now it's the the, the thing that I'm, I'm I'm concentrating on is, is, is me and what about pranks dude the pranks please For once a prankster yeah. always a prankster please understand. was doing them at school was doing them at university was doing them now I'm in the real world is this it Have this we is real it? yeah 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 Great. you're an adult now oh brilliant yeah 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 well, well, I love it it's fun <laughs> <laughs> you do pay tax right uh, uh, for yeah, the record yeah, for the yeah, record yeah, yeah full tax yeah full tax right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah the pranks of course yeah man I feel like bro I don't I, I feel like you play it down a little bit your pranks like I know we're about to finish the episode but bro like I'll say it again. 
Secret Service. What did you say? You said you found out what their biggest secret was. What did I say? That they're shit. <laughs> so, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got around, I was like, yeah. you know, the yeah. Secret Service, they're secrets. Yeah. They're shit. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> Please don't get shot doing that, no, bruv. That's the only thing that I request. Don't don't get shot. I um well he said take him out to uh, he I uh, sorry he didn't say take him out he said get him out he said get when I went on he said get him out and it was brilliant Trump we were already outside um, <laughs> I was like dude what you everyone's like dude what you mean sir yeah. we are already outside how can we take him outside <laughs> shut up <laughs> and, and the ball stayed there as well for we like a little there while for like twenty minutes okay. um, while. The security didn't know what to do because, you know, in the playbook, there's like, you know, what do we do if there is a terrorist? What do we do if there is a shooter? What if we do if there's no, what do we do if someone throws 100 swastika and blazing golf balls at the president's feet while he's carried on talking? You know, what they do? So he's talking. Yeah. They didn't want to interrupt. The sweet thing was they stayed there. So while he's talking about, you know, Mexican rapists and talking about banning Muslims, um, the there were hundreds of swastikas around him, and the, all his kids got up and talked as well. And they were surrounded; they that they were in amongst them as well. And then eventually they came along. And the beautiful thing was they got on their hands and knees, um, the, the 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 secret service, and um, they put these swastika golf balls into make America great again caps. It was a it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> fucking make it up <laughs> oh that's sick man. well thanks for coming on the show pleasure, Simon, pleasure. Man. Uh, what was that Bill what's up what's up um, you just mentioned about um, you done pranks at uni uh, didn't, didn't you do a prank at uni oh yeah oh we did a few pranks at uni yes. I mean, you got time for me to sh- no because you're going to have better you, have you got a good uni prank that you can share with us have I got a good uni prank no you you. I've, um, talk, I've, I've been pretty selfish talking about my pranks it is over to you I think we uh, we did a few so we had a mate that left his room open all the time amazing yeah and our, our flat was a five minute walk from our front door so you had to to let somebody in you had to walk down some stairs across (laughs) a courtyard across another courtyard and go to a front door so we worked out if he was really quick he'd have like an eight we'd have an eight minute window to fuck with his room so he had a date that was coming over it was like first year amazing and he was always like oh mate I'm like the ladies man as soon as they come into my room it's fucking game over I'm like what chloroform like what what do you what's your technique he's like no man I'm just irresistible so um he left his room open as he went down to get this girl who was going to come over and watch a DVD or Netflix yeah, back in yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we had a big bag of, they call them monkey nuts, but just like the peanuts that yeah, you yeah, open. Yeah. So had a big bag of empty shells. So we pulled back his bed sheets, poured the monkey nuts all over his bed sheets and then smoothed over his bed, took his laundry out everywhere, spread it all over the room. And then we both, don't ask me how we timed it and saved it, but at uni, I feel like I could always just knock one of these out whenever. He took, what, a shit his, took a shit in his toilet. And I, like, I, I, wiped our ass I don't know what you're about to <laughs> no, knock no, out no. here. <laughs> oh, fuck, we I just, missed the best thing. We just oh, knocked one out. Just knocked one out. Uh, at university, I could. I don't know how I timed it. What's it? Dude, what are you putting in these monkey nuts? <laughs> Mate, on site I could do it. Go, Pfft. yeah. But, um, no, we. Um, <laughs> You're getting older now, bro. Don't just it's, no. It's don't waste it. it. Got to save it. Got to save it. Got to save it. Not once a week. Um, but um, yeah, we took a shit in the toilet, wiped our asses, and put the toilet paper around the side of the toilet. So the, sh- the mountain of two shits Mate. were there in his toilet and this left was the seat. Codeine out. days, obviously. Pre, pre. So well, before I had my tonsils out and I had the codeine, so I was smooth. <laughs> Everything was running like clockwork. This is peak, it's peak, peak shit time. So a massive shit. Fucked his whole room up. Uh, and then like, yeah, I think we sat down in the living room, which which was very close to his room. And we heard him walk up to his, his bedroom door and was like, yeah, you know, uh, 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 watch a film, DVD, Transformers, have a cup of tea. Open the door and you hear him go, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, fuck. Amazing. <sighs> and I think she stayed in the room for like 10 minutes. Apparently five of that was her trying to find a part of the bed that didn't crunch <laughs> when she sat on it. And then she said she wanted to use his bathroom real quick. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> went in there and apparently came out a few minutes later and was like yeah sorry gotta go, got go. could have been his future wife I'm just not into guys <laughs> who don't flush yeah. <laughs> plus like your shit was two different colours like when I look at it it's like two different people shit who are you you fucking schizo shit what the fuck um, so yeah that was one of our pranks but nice, yeah man. man but that's not it's nothing like beating a secret service though Bill fucking hell yeah but we, we all start with those and yeah. then build up yeah, I mean, if you um, ever need help bruv 
You ever need First a brown guy? Help you ever need some <laughs> shit. <laughs> you ever, ever I need, need a brown, brown guy, guy to shit on site. <laughs> 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 need a mixed race brother that can fill a toilet full of shit. Stop. <laughs> yeah, I'm your guy, bro. Call me. I appreciate yeah. that. I don't I'm know when that's going to come in handy in 15 years' time. Who now, knows? I knew. He knew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he knew one day, dude, you're not going to believe this. How quickly can you get here and how quickly you can produce the goods? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take me past some of these. I'll be there in five. Anyway, thank you very much, Simon, for coming on the show. We'll put links to everything about you on nice the show. One. where nice. do we look for you on, on social media now do you want us to go for the Simon Brodkin ca- account then now yeah yeah so there's Simon Brodkin um, there's a Facebook there's a Twitter there's um, about to be an Instagram because it's all just new and then yeah heading up to the Edinburgh Festival which is the Pleasant so you can go to the Pleasant's website and blah 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 cool well, I hope the show goes really well man you're more thank than you. welcome to come back when you've done a few more pranks and let us know how the show goes mate. thank you mate plenty of ways to kill some time out there thank you for you the listener for killing it with <laughs> us uh, make sure you hit subscribe and uh, show us some love give us a review I've been Marcus Bronzy I have been Simon Brodkin as myself yeah that's it 100% (laughs) thank you for killing some time with us 